over IZZ. QZ we know that is equal to 48.5 times 10 to the power minus 6. And then we divide by twice of 0 0.01. Okay, so 48.5 power minus 6 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.01. We got 2.425. times 10 to the power minus 3 by over izz. Okay. Now, if a question like this were to appear in the term test, you, you cannot just say, OK, I did this at home. I know this is point A. This is going to be the highest value. OK. No, you have to show me. We clear. Okay. You don't write down there. I have some student your year say that from experience we know that okay we can't do that okay you have to show me okay so shear stress at point b is equal to vy over izz rule number one is constant right qz at point b divided by the thickness at point b is equal to what is equal to 0 0.05 that's the thickness okay so from here, we can determine our shear stress at point B you know, as a function of VYO IZZ. So QZ at point B now, so this is equal to QZ top flange plus by QZ of the web plus by QZ of the lower flange. So from here, we know that this is equal to 27.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 plus by 21 times 10 to the power minus 6 plus the last one, I think is 10, 10 times 10 to the power minus 6. So from here, we know that this will be equal to uh, 48.5 plus by 10. It's 58.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube. So the shear stress at point B will be equal to Vy over IZZ. QZ is 58.5 times 10 to the power minus 6. Thickness now is equal to 0 0.05. So 58.5 power minus 6 divided by 0 0.05 is equal to 1.17 times 10 to the power minus 3 Vy over IZZ. So from here, we can conclude, right? So if you were to focus on these two values, right? And these two values represent our ratio, right? Q over T, our Q over T, yes or no? So from here, we can now declare that the position of tau max will occur at point A, where stress at point A will be equal to what? 2.425 times 10 to the power minus 3 Vy over Izz. Okay. So from here, we know that tau max will be equal to 130 times 10 to the power of 6. And this will be equal to 2.425 times 10 to the power minus 3. Then you have Vy over IZZ. So IZZ we have determined earlier, which is equal to 4.86 times 10 to the power minus 6. 4.86 times 10 to the power minus 6. So therefore, we have concluded that Vy is equal to what? 130 times 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by 4.86 times 10 to the power of minus 6 divided by 2.425 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So 130, 4.86, 2.425. So it's equal to 260. Point 
536 times 10 to the power 3 Newton. Okay. Now we have to be really, really careful down here. Okay. In what sense? Okay, let, let me let me get the diagram again. I do apologize. You have to be really, really cautious down here. Over here does not mean Vy is equal to P. If you look at this diagram, you have to be very cautious. Note, Vy is not equal to what? P. I'm with that. Uh, a lot of times students calculate VY, okay, we're good to go. Okay, you have to be careful. So the distance over here, I declared earlier, this is 590. And this is 550, right? So in your mind, you have to come up with, with how the, how the uh, shear force will distribute, okay? You need to able, to visualize the shear flow or the shear force distribution. Okay. So from here, we are going to draw our FB, FBD. So we are aware that over here is your AY. Over here coming down is P. Okay. So we are also aware that BY is going up. Distance from here to here is 0 0.59. Distance from here to here is 0 0.55. Okay. So I'm going to take some mention about moment about a z axis at point a is equal to zero so this is like static analysis really straightforward so this will be minus 0 0.59 p plus by 0.59 plus by 0.55 1 1.14 by zero so from here we get by is equal to 0 0.59 p Divide by 1.14. So 0 0.59 divided by 1.14 is equal to 0 0.59 divided by 1.14 is equal to 0.518p. And then you do some mention about forces in the y direction is equal to 0. So you get ay minus p plus by 0.518p. So ay is equal to uh, one man, 0 0.482. Okay. So when you have calculated all this, I'm going to cut and paste this whole thing again, if I could. So if we were to sketch our shear force diagram, this is our X, this is our V. So we are going to see over here, this is uh, 0 0.59. And then over here, this is 1.14. So we know that it's going to go up. Come down horizontally and then go back up. And we know for the fact that this value is 0 0.482p. And then over here, this is equal to 0 point what? 0.518p, UG not 9. Okay. So using note. that V max is equal to 0 0.518 P. And this will be equal to what? Equal to 
P will be equal to 260.536 power of 3 divided by 0.548. 502. 0.965. I'm stand to power 3 Newton. This is your answer. Let me do it again. Yep. Okay. And you're going to see why I face a question like this. Okay, you're going to see more of this. Okay, when we do combined loading, so we're going to see so much of this. Okay, what does one value means in your calculation and how to interpret it into the real world in terms of P? You have to be really cautious in that. Uh, I forgot, did I start recording? I did. I know every time it's like that, all of a sudden, you know, the fear is there. Now, B is where it gets challenging, okay? but not impossible. You guys know how to solve B already, in fact. Okay? But B of the question is, the wall thickness of the beam, such that the maximum shear stress at the center at the region with the smallest wall thickness are equal. Okay. okay. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to design the shear flow. Yes or no? Remember what I told you guys about the shear flow? We're going to sketch the shear flow. Okay. Uh, too thick. We're going to sketch the shear flow. So we know how the shear flow will move. Yes or no? Now, let me ask you a question. Which geometry, which geometry are based on the shear spread, on the shear code? Which geometry? So I, I had a student really, really bright. Okay. And I think he's doing his co-op now. He got a really good co-op. I think it was about 50, uh, $26 an hour, I remember. So this is how it goes. He told me that this is too thick, Eugene. Come on, too thick. Student told me that when I say thickness, he assumed the thickness to be this thickness and the thickness to be this thickness. So now to you all, which one is the right thickness at point alpha or at point beta? And you have to tell me why. Yes. Why? Yes. Rule number five states what? What does rule number five state? The shear flow, the, the thickness is perpendicular to the what? The shear flow. So we say the thickness is not at the top, not at the, if the, if at the top, the thickness is this thickness. Are we Does that make sense now? That's why I say, all the rules cannot be broken. If any of these rules are broken, we are done. And that case is like Evans, really, really bright. Evans, right? Really, really bright, okay? And and he's right, okay? Thickness can be that it's not wrong, but based on the shear flow, that is not the what? Thickness. Are we clear? Okay. Right. So from here, what happens? Okay. As you remember, those days, okay? When there's an optimization question, it's not easy. And optimization is not. So now, what we have to consider now is T over here is and what? Unknown. Okay. So I'm going to call this point A. 
I'm going to call this point B at the centroid. Okay. So we know. What do we know? We 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 have to come up with the, the, the equation, right? That obeys the rule that Vy over Izz. Oh, sorry. Vy over Izz. Qz at point A divide by the thickness. Now we don't know what is this thickness at point. Not a clue. This must be equal to Vy over Izz. Qz at point B divide by a thickness that we know of 0 0.05. Rule number one, Vy and Izz are what? 